with us this evening as we celebrate Good Friday. Good Friday has always been a very special service here at Ojai Presbyterian Church. We have what we call a tenebrae service. The tenebrae means a service of darkness. And what will happen is we're going to read through the story of Holy Week. And when we read each passage, we're going to extinguish one of the candles on the candelabra behind me. And the reason we do that is at the beginning of the Gospel of John, John says that Jesus was the light, and the light entered into the world. And what happens is, in Good Friday, as we come close to Jesus' crucifixion, we slowly start extinguishing that light. That's why it's a service of darkness. But the story of Holy Week begins with Jesus in the upper room with his disciples. And as he gathers with them there, he is there to celebrate the Passover feast, the great story of God leading the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, the exodus into the land and the nation that God has prepared them to be. And so Jesus gathers with his disciples, and while he's in the upper room, he takes bread. And according to the tradition of Passover, he blesses the bread, and then he breaks it. And he says to his disciples, this is my body, broken for you. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup. And pouring it out, he said, this is my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death on our behalf until he comes again in glory. If you have bread and a cup with you at home, I invite you now, as we all do together, to take a piece of bread, to dip it into the cup, and receive the goodness and the grace of our Lord Jesus. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground.
Jesus returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Get up and let's go. My betrayer is coming. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal saying, The one I kiss is the one you want. Arrest him. Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus responded, Friend, do what you need to do. The men stepped forward, laid their hands on Jesus, and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hands on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus reacted, Put your sword back into its place, for all who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you know that I can call my father for help? And he will send more than 12 armies of angels. But how would the scriptures come true, which say it must happen this way? Then Jesus turned to the crowd. Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me, as if I'm a bandit? Every day I sat in the temple teaching you, and you did not arrest me. But all this is happening, so the scriptures of the prophets will come true. All the disciples fled and deserted him. Those who arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest's house, where the scribes and elders had gathered. Peter followed from a distance all the way to the courtyard of the house. He went inside and sat with the guards to see how this would end. The chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they found none, even though many people came forward with false evidence. Finally, two men came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple God and build it back in three days. The high priest asked Jesus, Can you answer to what they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest stood and said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus answered, if you say so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest reacted and tore his clothes and said, blasphemy. You don't need any more witnesses. You have just heard his blasphemy. Conflicts. 
They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him out over and beat him. Early in the morning, the chief priests met with the elders, scribes, and the whole council, and they made their plans. They put Jesus in chains, led him away, and had him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you say so. Pilate responded, the chief priests have accused you of many things. Aren't you going to answer to the charges they bring against you? But Jesus did not apply, and Pilate was amazed. Every year at the Passover festival, Pilate would always release one prisoner to the people. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed a murder during a previous riot. The crowd gathered and asked Pilate to release a prisoner. He responded, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? For Pilate knew very well that it was jealousy why the chief priests had arrested Jesus. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd and asked to have Barabbas released instead. Pilate asked, then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, 
crucify him. Pilate responded, why? What crime has he done? The crowd shouted all the more, crucify him. Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he released Barabbas, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there, with the criminals one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing.
It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charges against him read, the king of the Jews. People passed by him, shaking their heads and insulted him by saying, aha, you're going to destroy the temple and build it back in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and scribes were also mocking him and saying, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we can see and believe. Even the two that were crucified with Jesus taunted him. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. 
Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. When you come to Good Friday, then you hear this story read and you hear this story sung. There's a couple of pieces of story that you just can't get around. The cross. The power of that symbol, <clears throat> the brutality, the finality of it. The cross is such a powerful symbol that at times it actually overshadows other critical parts of the story, which is the crown or the kingdom. Repeatedly, Jesus is asked, are you the king of the Jews? The sign on the cross over his head says, the king of the Jews. But when you look at the kingdom or the crown for one moment, there's one haunting line that sticks with me in this story. It's when the criminal, one of the criminals next to him on the cross, cries out, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And I think part of the power of this moment is the cross as a symbol of God putting to death everything that binds us, everything that has defined us in brokenness. But the cross is inseparably connected to the kingdom, to the crown. You see, what happens in this moment when he says, remember me in your kingdom, he is thinking, when you finally come to your kingdom, remember my suffering. But what the thief doesn't know is the cross is the beginning of the kingdom. 
that Jesus' kingdom that he has spoken about through all the parables is a kingdom where God will pay the price, where God in love will willingly sacrifice so that in God's kingdom, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can define us over God's grace. The cross leads to the kingdom. And on Good Friday, where the cross can be so overwhelming, maybe the prayer that should be on our lips as well this evening, are remember me, Jesus, when you come to your kingdom, when you have paid the price on the cross, when we are now reconciled to God in grace, and where new life now becomes possible, all begins at the cross. And so on this evening, I want to invite you in your own homes into a moment of silence where you invite Jesus to remember you in the kingdom of grace. When we join together on Easter morning, it will be truly a celebration that not even death can overcome the grace or the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. So pause for a moment. But when we gather again, we'll gather to rejoice that the cross leads to the kingdom and the kingdom to new life. Focus on that this weekend. Take a moment of silence. And then rejoice with us on Easter morning. Amen.